Hello, welcome back to Uncle Max Cookery Lessons. I'm going to do a classic pan fried salmon with a dill velouté sauce. Real classic. I'll run you through the ingredients now. Okay, there's quite a lot of ingredients there, so I won't list them all now. Just rewind and pause it on the recipe that I put on the screen a moment ago. But the star of the show is this lovely bit of salmon here, what I just bought from a local fishmonger, one in Bedminster in Bristol, called Bristol Fish. So if you're in the area, check him out, good bloke. Reasonably priced as well. Now, what I'm showing you there, that's where the pin bones would be. He'd gone to the effort of taking them out, he left one or two in there, so I'm just double checking now. I've got my fish tweezers, keep them in a bit of cold water, it's a bit tidier that way. And there you go, there's one there, and later on I found another little one, but he'd done a pretty good job to be honest with you. But that's where they will be, and it's nice to get them out because no one wants a fish bone in their mouth, and I think that's what puts a lot of people off eating fish, which is a shame. We're a bunch of wusses really, aren't we? Anyway. Scales too, that's something else people don't like, but I like crispy skin, so rather than skinning this, I'm going to take off any remaining scales, he'd, as I say, he'd already taken most of them off, but just scrape against them, there's a nap with scales, so you go against the nap, against the grain if you like, and you should get them all off, but there was hardly any there, if it's covered in them, what I suggest you do, do that in the sink, put all your pots and pans away because you don't want to get them covered in loads of tiny little bits of scale or get a bin bag pop it inside and get most of them off that way and they'll st and the scales will stay in the bag and you won't be in trouble so that's a bonus anyway scaled pin boned there's a little bit of very fatty meat there on the flank that is also on the belly I just take that off there because I didn't like it look the way it looked don't worry, all trimmings were eaten later. I gobbled them all up. This is called scoring. This is a good idea for your pan frying the skin. It also looks really nice, but I'm only just really sort of going through the skin. I'm not going deep into the flesh. I'm keeping those slices evenly spaced out as well, because that makes it easier for portioning. Because you think, how many lines were there? Four or five? I'm just working out my size. First one in, get your eye in and then go crack on. Now I needed five portions, one for this video, four for the next day when my mummy came over for lunch. That was very nice. Hello mum, if you're watching. Right then, you get them in the fridge, cover them with cling film and forget about them until just before you need to cook them. This is the beginning of the velouté sauce. Velouté is a classic. I think it translates to sort of velvety, velvet smooth, something like that. Or I could just be making that up. I'll let you decide. Key ingredients for velouté is a roux, which means flour and butter, and a stock. All these other ingredients are just there to enhance it. So shallots, synonymous with French cookery. Get those nicely chopped up. I believe in America you call that mincing. Over here, mincing means something completely different. And some garlic, get that chopped up. And the herb I'm using for this one is dill. Dill and salmon, they are made to go together. There is a few little flavour combinations with herbs that just seem right. Lamb with rosemary, sage with pork, tarragon with chicken you know it just seems right and dill is a very soft almost sweet subtle herb it goes beautifully with salmon the little bit of stalky bits that I left on the side there I decided a minute I'm just going to quickly chop those up a bit smaller as well and that's going to go in the sauce in the early stages so it doesn't worry you don't worry about them losing their color but it will give some flavor so here we go making a roux melt butter stir in flour but what I'm also going to do is get my shallots, garlic, and a little bit of dill in at this stage. 
you can sweat them for a little while but don't worry don't don't run the risk of this discoloring and browning your your butter or your shallots because you'll have to start again because you don't want that so dump in the flour and you've got your roux so another ingredient I'm using to elevate this velouté to become a bit more luxurious is white wine. Feel free to use a vermouth. A bit of, uh, what else could you use? A bit of perno might be quite nice to go with fish or ricard, whatever you want to call it. But I just went white wine. A good 200 mil sort of size glass there. And this is my technique for getting liquid into a roux. I move the roux around the pan and it gathers up the liquid. Usually that would be white uh, white sauce you'd be doing with milk, but in this case, the wine and fish stock. Now once you've gathered up the liquid, then you can really start beating it, get it nice and smooth, velvety smooth, because it's a velouté. Now you've probably heard me say before about not using a whisk when you're doing these sauces. I get quite frustrated when I see people doing that. Really good chefs. In this case, when I dumped in my stock, I just decided very quickly get a whisk in there, get it together and then go back to my spoon. The reason why I did that, the reason why I don't like the whisk is it will scratch the pan so your pan won't live as long. You might get a metallic flavour and also it doesn't reach in those corners. So you never know if parts of your pan are catching and your sauce might burn. That's why I don't like to do it. There you go, I'm done with the whisk now, get, that, get rid of that. You won't see it again. Back to my spoon. Now I know I've got it all combined nicely. So now it's a case of simmering, letting the flour cook out, and it will reduce, and all the flavors will develop. So you can keep tasting it. If you taste it and it tastes a bit floury, it's not ready yet. Now don't worry about the alcohol in the wine. It will reduce, it will boil away. The amount of time you're simmering this for, there won't be any alcohol left, I assure you. This whole process probably took about eight to ten minutes. You didn't want to watch all of that, so I used some editing to cut through it. But we're getting near the end now. You can think about seasoning this. So there we go. Nice bit of black pepper. If you don't want the black flex, use some white pepper. But we'll say we've got there's going to be some lemon zest in this, there's going to be herbs and stuff. I thought, what the hell? A little bit of black pepper in there as well, doesn't matter. Now, so here goes the zest. If you're going to zest the lemon, don't cut it first. You'll regret that. It'll be really awkward, difficult to do. So I like to zest it first. And then I cut it and then I get the juice out of it. I'm just using my hand there to catch any pips and stones from inside the lemon. We don't want those in a finished sauce. bit of cream and at some stage I put a spoonful of Dijon mustard in and for some reason I do apologize I must have edited that out of the video so a spoonful of Dijon mustard went in there as well you don't have to but I say it's another 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 ingredient that makes it a bit more nice and the cream I really do think enriches this a bit more makes it feel a bit more posh so final little taste there looking good Right then, that to the side, let's cook the fish. Season the skin, tiny bit of olive oil in the pan, medium hot pan to start with. You do want to sear the skin. I'm using a non-stick pan which helps, but if you haven't got a non-stick pan, that technique is very useful. So as soon as it goes in in the oil, move it around, even for like 10 to 20 seconds, and that will stop it from sticking to the pan. And once it's sealed, it's not gonna stick. And also that little bit of butter, obviously makes it a bit better, but it does help stop it from sticking. It, it boils underneath the skin and lifts it off. Now, if you've got more than one bit of salmon to do, you can do two or three pieces in a pan this size at a time, but if you've got more than that to do, you might have to do this in batches. You can do three pieces at a time, get them all sealed, put them on a, a tray, and you can finish them in the oven. 
but if you put too many pieces in the pan at one time you lose the temperature in the pan and it stops frying. Now I like to just give the sides uh, one or two seconds because there's blood in fish. You don't normally notice it with white fish but in salmon it comes through to the sides and looks white and it doesn't look very nice so by giving it a quick seal like that you stop that from happening. Now you need to use your eyes when you're cooking fish and, and it's salmon's very conveniently a dark pink colour and it turns pale pink as it's cooking so it's absolutely obvious when it's cooked. I like to just keep gently moving it around making sure it's not sticking cook it about three quarters of the way on the skin and then when I'm happy with that I flip it over turn off the heat and let the heat of the pan just finish it off whilst you then warm up your sauce and warm up your vegetables and all that it's very convenient salmon and it is gorgeous that skin I'm so pleased with that that is really crisp now if you had that in a very hot pan it would have curled up and it would have gone it would have been burnt before it was anywhere near cooked so you've got to get your temperature right I'd say low to medium and there we go it is almost there so flip it over turn off the heat okay I've just got one portion of sauce there as I say the rest of it is for the next day. I added a splash of water because it was looking a little bit thick and I thought that will reduce down again so here we go bring that up to the boil you can keep tasting it you can adjust the seasoning you want to get your herbs in so leave the most the majority of the dill to the last minute there it goes so it'll keep its color a bit of vibrancy and freshness And you know me, I can't resist. So in goes a little knob of butter anytime now. There it goes. Monte au beurre, that gives a little extra shine and richness to the sauce. Now I'm going to level with you. I don't do this sauce very often. It's a real classic technique that I think everyone should have in their locker. But I actually prefer just sweat the shallots, lots of white wine, and then lots of cream and fish stock, and let it all reduce down together. And most chefs nowadays do that and call it a velouté. It's not a velouté, it's a reduced cream sauce. But that's the difference. And a really good velouté is lovely, but I actually think just a, a reduced cream sauce is a bit lovelier. There you go, just being honest with you. I'm not the world's greatest chef at presentation, so I like to keep things simple. I don't want to put a sauce over a lovely crispy skin of the salmon, so I put the sauce on first, sit that gorgeous bit of Scottish salmon when you're ready. There it goes. Delightful. Absolutely delightful. And it was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Anyway. Thank you very much for watching Uncle Max Cookery Lessons. I do appreciate it. I hope you give this one a go. Let me know how you get on. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video, which will be coming really soon. Bye.